and former Olympic medalist and unbeaten as a professional, Jamie Conlon, the MTK Global Professional Development Coordinator, Kevin Gamble, the Director of Feel in the Football, and Bob Yellen, President of MTK Global. Let's just start with Mr. Bob Aaron. Bob, first of all, why was it so important for you to travel all the way across to Belfast to be here today? Well, I, I wanted to come to Belfast. I haven't been here in about 30 years. Last time I was here, they had something called the Troubles. They were blowing up cars in the streets, and it, was, it wasn't a very pleasant place to be. And there wasn't one hour of sunshine. Today, it's like coming into a new world. It's a beautiful city now. Sun is out. Michael Conlon, the hero of Belfast, is here, and we're here to announce uh, a terrific, terrific fight on August 3rd. Tell us more about that contest. In terms of how it all came to fruition, Michael Conlon caught your eye at the Olympics back in Rio after that decision against uh, his opponent, Nikitin. Why did you want to make this bout possible, and why did you want it to be this opponent? Well, I think as everybody uh, observed uh, while uh, Nikitin had the gloves on and was fighting Michael in the fight and everybody knew that Nikitin got the decision. It was really Michael against Vladimir Putin. Clear as that. Putin was directing which Eastern Bloc fighters would win medals. Very, very unfair. Nikitin, who we signed to a contract after we signed Michael, with the idea that one day we would match them against each other in a fair and square contest with no political implications, best man will win. Now, Vladimir Nikitin is a nice, nice young man. You'll be meeting him. Uh, you can't really blame him for the unfair result. He really had nothing to do with it. It was the judges who were dictated to who scored the fight. He believes, he believes that he will, in a professional boxing contest, be the victor over Michael. He really believes that and he's a very, very good, aggressive fighter. But maybe he's remembering Michael as an amateur, because Michael as a professional has really improved. He's a tremendous fighter. And I think on August 3rd, we'll have a real treat. We'll see a great main event. And Michael will show all of you uh, what he's made of. Michael, it's the opponent you want. Definitely, this is the, the fate which I've wanted since that day, August, August 16, 2016. It was probably the, the worst day of my, of my amateur boxing career. And, and it's a wrong that needs to be you know, wrote the right way this day. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's, it's, it's probably going to be the first fight that I've actually been able to get up for because it's the only fight I've wanted since then. Could you have ever dreamt of fighting in the heart of West Belfast as part of the film? To be honest, I couldn't have. Um, the, the opportunity came when, when, when Phil started talking, when we all started talking together. And, you know, I was there last year watching, watching the, the concerts and stuff, and the atmosphere was unbelievable. I've been at the Fela every near every other year. So it's, it's a, fantastic, uh, a fantastic event, and the fact that I did it is unbelievable. It's my back garden. You know, I, I probably fought in the Falls Park growing up as a kid. Now I'm never really getting paid to fit in the Falls Park again. One of the biggest, biggest rival of my career. Kevin, for Fit Up Bubble, what an attraction, what a star attraction for the festival. Yeah, it's, it's massive for Fit Up Bubble. Um, and for 30 years, 31 now this year, Fit has set out to showcase the best of West Belfast and the best of Belfast. Um, and there's no better feeling for Fit Up than welcoming one of our own into the heart of the Falls Park. Who's part of the DNA of West Belfast? Who's a hero to so many people in this room and outside of this room? Who have followed his career through the amateurs, watching him competing on TV and the Olympics. Now we all get to see 
our own local lad fighting, as Mick said, in his own back garden. Um, and, you know, for me, the minute the tickets go on sale for this, there'll be a clamour for them. We can't wait to see Mick redo or rewrite that injustice. Um, we all watched it on TV. We knew the result wasn't right. Um, and I'm delighted that Fela has played a small role um, with Mick and the team and MTK and so on to bring this fight to false park, to bring this fight home uh, and to, to rewrite that wrong. Jamie, Vladimir Nikita hasn't taken this fight. Maybe don't think he's going to win it. Tell us why that's not going to be the case. I think Michael is, is leapfrog Vladimir Nikita from the amateur days. He's improving at a drastic rate in the professionals now with Adam Booth. Nikita really does believe, as, as Bob says, that he's going to win. He wouldn't have took this fight for no, no, no other reason. Um, but to bring it to Belfast, to put it in front of the home, home crowd, the crowd that also felt the injustice that Michael suffered in Rio, to give it to these people, to, to do it in our own backyard, to be there to see the right being wrong, the Russian being beaten, is going to be very, very special in August 3rd. And crucially, this isn't a fight that only appeals to people within boxing because of the wider context and the Olympics. To general sports fans, this will catch the eye. Yeah, definitely. It was, you know, it, it was shown over the world. You know, the, 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 the news conference after, Michael talking the way he talked, the feeling that people felt, they've all been there at some stage in their life, wronged by someone else. In this case, it wasn't the Keaton, it was Russia. Um, so it, they will feel a part of this. They're emotionally involved in, in this. They're emotionally involved in Michael versus the Keaton. They'll remember the, 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 the night in uh, 2016. Um, so they will be a part of this as Michael. When, they, when Michael wins, everyone wins. Michael, when you, hopefully in your case, get your hand raised at the end of this context, will all that be worth it? All the stuff that's gone on before, will it let you move on to the next chapter of your career and put this one to bed? I, I think so. Um, this has been something that's been looming over my head since, since I did turn professional. It's something that probably my, my amateur career is going to be remembered for. And, you know, the fact that, that I can take that away and, and, and fix it, you know, I, I've got to be very thankful, um, very grateful to, to my manager team, MTK, to my promotional team, top rank, and obviously feel in football. Um, this is something that I'll be really, really proud of. The, the boxing in, in West Belfast, it, it doesn't happen much. You know, the fights are always going to be in the Odyssey or, or somewhere else. So the fact that it's in West Belfast, where I'm from, I'll be very proud. Uh, and this will put my amateur career to bed and, and finally be able to move on to bigger and better things as a pro and, and achieve everything I've said it to achieve. Well, this is a fight in the heart of West Belfast, but how will it be? the global audience so on likes of ESPN all over the world? Yes, it, uh, we've made arrangements, of course, for the fight to be shown all over the United States and Canada on ESPN. It will come in live in the afternoon. Uh, August is a very good time because we haven't started our uh, football season, our Real football, not like your fake football. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so we're going to get a, a very big audience. And of course, uh, the uh, uh, event will be shown all over the world, uh, all over Latin America, Eastern Europe. Uh, very, very big, big audience. Uh, so I'm, I'm very pleased. Uh, while Michael and the, the Kitkin will be the main event, uh, together with MTK, we're putting together a dynamite card uh, that will really thrill everybody that comes. Uh, we look for this to be uh, a, a real groundbreaking event. Uh, people can see once again uh, how uh, vociferous the uh, fans uh, in Belfast are. I remember 30 years ago, as I say, during the Troubles, uh, where I forget the name of the arena, uh, but the night of the fight when uh, uh, Barry McGuigan uh, fought Bernard Taylor of the United States, it was absolutely packed and everybody was unified cheering for McGuigan and it was something that was noted 
all around the world considering where people had read and been told about the troubles that were going on in northern ireland so that was to me a very very big event and this one because of the injustice uh in the olympics uh with the decision and the controversy of course uh it will be believe me uh, a well-watched event in the united states and the rest of the world and Bob Young, so, something you would like to echo in terms of the local context as well? Excuse me? Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, as, as Bob stated, yeah. and we talked about already, Michael <coughs> is a global star. He's obviously one of the stars in the MTK global stable, but he is he's a global star and getting bigger and bigger all the time. This fight will prove to just further enhance his reputation as one of the all around coming stars in boxing worldwide. And you know, one thing I would like to say on behalf of MTK, you know, we're proud and honored to be associated with top rank and Bob Arum. He's you know, obviously shown over the decades being, he is the premier promoter in boxing. But one of the keys to top rank, one of their strengths, is they're willing to bring the fights and the fighters to the people. They don't just depend on going to a big arena where they get a lot of money and walking away. They will bring their fighters, they'll develop them and bring them to the people. And this is a great example of how Bob and Top Break operate. They're bringing Michael to the people and just that type of opportunity for a fighter is unbeatable. There's no way to it. And just finally, Kevin, how can you be there? Tell us about tickets. Yeah, well, tickets will go on sale this Friday. Um, I'll say in the Falls Park, uh, and anytime time field tickets go on sale, there's a clamor for them locally. Um, and we expect massive uh, attention for this fight locally, nationally, and internationally. So um, we'd appeal to the crowds here today, anyone watching, get your tickets early. This will be a sellout game. We are bringing Michael Common home to the Falls Park to, to rewrite that injustice. Uh, and it's a fight that you don't want to miss. We are going to have one on interviews afterwards, but if anyone in the audience would like to ask a question, please use your arm and I'll uh, come to you with a microphone. There's a young man in the back. Thought about it? Uh, Sal, you'd like to ask him something? Yeah. You had your hand up. Can you say my school jumper? <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Anybody else would like to ask a question? Anyone? They are going to be uh, one-on-one -on -one interviews afterwards, so I think we'll bring this uh, press conference to a conclusion. There is, of course, built up throughout the week to Rana Burnett's homecoming bout at the Ulster Hall that takes place on Friday to be events throughout the week. But uh, finally, can you show appreciation to our panel, Jimmy Conley, Michael Conley, Claire, Aaron, Simon, and Bob Jones. Thank you.